Okay, last part of chapter two then is about regions, and then I'm going to do a video on some exam questions. So this time, instead of it just being the loci, we're actually going to be shading particular regions that make something true. So it wants us to shade each of the regions on an Argan diagram for the following questions that we've got here. So I always think it's worth trying to translate this kind of sentence that we've got here, this mathematical sentence, into something to do with English. So this thing is actually saying that we want the distance between a complex number and 4, 2. The distance between a complex number and that complex number is z and 4, 2. And then the inequality sign that we've got here with the 2 should say is less than or equal to 2. Is less than or equal to 2. And then we remind ourselves of what this is actually going to look like. So we know this is also going to represent a circle. So it's our z minus 4 plus 2i is equal to 2. We're going to draw the circle for the beginning part, and then we're going to switch it to this inequality symbol. So if I draw a quick idea of what this will look like, it's going to be with our real and imaginary axes. I'm very bad at labelling real and imaginary, but we should do really. So the centre of the circle is going to be at 4 and 2. And the radius of the circle is going to be 2. So I'm going to go to my circle drawing tool here. And terrible circle, but it's not too bad when it fixes it. I want to just attach the axis. I'm going to move this a little bit into the middle. And this is what our circle looks like. So this is where everything for our complex number is equal to 2. The distance from here to the complex number is 2. But we want it to be less than or equal to 2. So when we shade it in, anything that's inside this circle is going to be less than or equal to 2. So I'm just going to shade on the inside of this circle that we've got here. Now, a quick note that we might say here is if the question instead said less than 2 rather than less than or equal to 2, instead of there being a solid line for the circle, there should be a dotted line for the circle. So that's for this kind of symbol. If it's less than or equal to 2, it would be a solid line for the circle like this. So that's going to apply in our next question that we've got here. So a quick reminder of what this actually means. This first bit means the distance between the complex number and 4. And this one means the distance between the complex number z and 6 distance between z, or oh, I should have really written between, you know, the distance between z and 4, and the distance between z and 6. And we want this distance to be less than this distance, i.e. we want it to be closer to 4 than 6. We want the distance between the complex number and 4 to be smaller than the distance between the complex number and 6. So I'm going to draw that here. Let's do 4 and 6. Now we know the perpendicular bisector is going to be the line that we would draw. It would normally be like this, but because of this symbol that we've got here, it's going to be a dotted line instead. So I'm going to mark it on in a dotted line like this. That's obviously crossing here at 5. And the equation of that line, if it's in its Cartesian form, is going to be that x is equal to 5. Now think about it. Anywhere over here, the complex number's distance to 4 is going to be less than the complex number's distance to 6. So the region that we're going to be shading is all of the left-hand side of this particular bit that we've got here. Okay, We're not going to be doing anything on this side of it at all. Again, if it was less than or equal to for this part, it would be a solid line rather than a dotted line. OK, this time we're going to do an argument. So this time we want the argument. I'm not going to write this all out in words. We want the argument to be between 0 and pi over 4. We're just going to include this. So just a quick reminder, this middle bit we should rewrite as z minus 2 plus 2i. So it's telling us that we're going to be drawing it from the coordinate 2, 2. So here is 2, 2. Remember, it won't include that bit, so we do an empty circle, and we want it to be between 0 and pi over 4. Now, the 0 bit has this symbol. It's got the um, dotted line. So I'm going to do an argument of 0 like this, and then pi over 4. Remember, pi over 4 is like 45 degrees, and it's going to be a solid line like this. So I'm going to indicate that this is pi over 4, and everything inside that gap will mean that it's in between 0 and pi over 4. So I'm going to be just shading in that section that we've got there. 
Okay, last one that we're going to do has got kind of like a, a double inequality. So I'm going to do this one maybe in one color, this one maybe in another color, and then overall I'll shade them in a pink. So this one's going to be a circle um, with the center at one and radius one. So let's get that drawn. So at one, and it's going to have a radius of one, that means it's going to look like this kind of shape. Let's mark that's one, that's zero, and that's two. And we want it to be less than or equal to one. So it's a good job I've used a solid line there. So this one is going to be everything that is inside the circle like this. And for this one, we want the argument of z plus 1. So remember, that's going to be z minus minus 1. So we're drawing it from minus 1 over here. And we want it to be between pi over 2, uh, sorry, pi over 12 and pi over 2. So pi over 12 is going to be something like this. And it's going to be a solid line. And then pi over 2 is going to be a dotted line. It's going to be something just coming vertically upwards. Pi over 2 is like 90 degrees. So that one that's going to be green is going to be in between those two sections that we've got there. And so the region which makes them both true, for it being both of them, is just going to be this region that we have inside here where it works with both of them. That's actually so messy. I'm going to do it with a slightly smaller thickness. So the region that we would shade that makes both of those things true is inside this section of the circle that we've got here. So ignore the green, ignore the yellow. It's just this kind of grayish pink part that we've got there. So we need to do with regions. Um, you just draw the loci as normal and decide whether it's going to be inside or outside these kinds of things. Quick thing I might just say to you. We also talked about this first question, how it was going to be different if it was these kinds of symbols. If it was the other way around, let's say that the symbol was like greater than two or greater than or equal to two. Instead of shading inside the circle, we'd want the distance to be more than two. So we'd be just shading on the outside of the circle instead. So it's not always going to be inside the circle. It could quite easily be outside of the circle. And same for this as well. The argument, um, instead of it being inside this wedge that we've got here, it could be described as being on the other part of the wedge. And you can just think to yourself what that would look like. So you've done enough questions now to answer exercise 2F. And then I'm going to do just a few exam questions on the next video that kind of pulls together all of this topic.